On today's episode of Ask Dr. Bitcoin, we're going to revisit the topic of blockchain and we're going to try to explain it in differentiation to the confusion that exists in the market between people that don't understand the difference where it exists between Bitcoin and blockchain. That, are you confused yet? Anyway, I'll clear it up. Stay tuned. So the enterprise, that is to say companies like IBM, Oracle, Dell, EMC, these companies have had a mantra over the last several years, I would say, last couple of years going back to the beginning of 2017. And that, that mantra is blockchain, not Bitcoin. That make a lot, it shouldn't make a lot of sense to folks that have been a regular watcher of this show because we know that Bitcoin and blockchain are twins. They were originally both uh, conceptualized in the 1980s by a group of folks that call themselves cypherpunks. But of course, it wasn't until it was uh, kind of cemented in Satoshi Nakamoto's white paper and subsequent Bitcoin blockchain, the idea of a Byzantine fault tolerant single ledger accounting system. So, so why is the, uh, the enterprise, as it were, uh, trying to differentiate itself from Bitcoin? Well, the answer is actually pretty simple, in my opinion. Uh, you've got uh, a long history going back to like 1978 to the mid 80s to the spikes of activity in the 90s uh, to uh, a lot of the early Bitcoin activity that actually happened on blockchain, where you've got things that business doesn't necessarily want to associate itself with. Business doesn't want to be political. Unfortunately, blockchain, in my opinion, and most people that are experts in this area will tend to agree with me, blockchain is an intrinsically political concept. It is started by a group of people that call themselves cypherpunks. They also call themselves something even more bombastic, crypto anarchists. They saw blockchain as a tool for alleviating the need for a country or a state. You can, you can replace a lot of the things that governments do uh, in terms of protecting consumer protection or uh, civil protection or criminal protection with a blockchain. And that is an inherently political concept. And this is something that even the enterprise seeks to do itself. IBM is, will be very proud to tell you about this, this creation they've done on Hyperledger where they've tracked blood diamonds. They call them conflict diamonds. Basically to say the, the entire diamond industry has adopted this, this, this situation where you can put all these diamonds when they're in barrels and individuals, uh, individual gems uh, into a blockchain, into a record, and wherever they travel throughout the world, you can see where they came from from the very beginnings, from their very origins. And in so doing, you can ensure that that diamond engagement ring that you're buying for your beloved is not something that was, you know, uh, genocide was created to, to mine, right? That is a function of government. That's a function that government wants to do, but ne not necessarily can do. So back to the back to the eternal debate. Why are we talking about this? So I, this is a subject of a uh, series of talks that I've given on the history of blockchain, history of Bitcoin over the last mm, probably about six months or so. It kind of all came to a head last night when I was at a, uh, an event called Digital Fight Club. I was up on stage debating somebody from NTT Consulting, an enterprise technology consulting company, and the topic was blockchain versus Bitcoin. And a very funny thing happened. We had a very, I thought it was an excellent debate. We both made very fine points. The, the judges panel and the audience who was voting on who was going to win all said very similar things. We didn't understand the difference between your two points of view. Uh, we couldn't tell the difference between what you were saying. So to be very clear, let me kind of outline those two sides. So the enterprise is saying we should all be working on blockchain. It's this great technology for enabling business. And the crypto nativists, people like myself that have been in the space since 2011, are saying things like you can't design good blockchains unless you understand what makes Bitcoin work. And we've talked about this in a variety of contexts on the show, but what makes Bitcoin work? Bitcoin works because it is a Byzantine fault tolerant system that has a token that is, has, a, has a, uh, a, scarce, a scarcity to it. Perhaps it has a utility to it. And it has a, 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 a public ecosystem that can join or depart at will. Uh, and the reason why they stay together is because of an alignment of financial incentives. Uh, if you look at the example blockchains being created by much of the enterprise, they, they lack one or more of these criteria. And in so doing, are creating inherently less secure blockchains than what Bitcoin is. Now, is it 
is it a is it a cardinal crime to create a less secure blockchain than Bitcoin? No, in fact, there is a variety of reasons why you might want to take out some of these elements out of a blockchain, uh, and some of those are projects that I'm personally involved in with some of my clients. But to understand what you're doing, you need to understand what makes Bitcoin work, what makes it secure, and if your instance, your particular use case merits removing one of those to sacrifice security, removing one of those criteria, sacrifice security to increase functionality. So I hope this clears up some of the confusion. If not, send me feedback. We've got a comment section. I've got an email address. There's a bunch of ways to contact me that'll probably pop up at the end of this episode. So do that and I'll see you in the next episode. So, uh, I mentioned a couple episodes on the show. Uh, there's this one right here, uh, what, what is blockchain? Uh, and then there's this one right over here. Uh, it is five questions blockchain experts get asked all the time and get sick of answering. And it's not the exact title, but you know you can see it right there. Watch it. Yeah, yeah, definitely click on it. <laughs> Perfect.